In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to understand integers. The goal for the video is to understand positive and negative numbers and use them to rep represent real world quantities. And the question, the essential question that we're going to be taking a look at is how can you use positive and negative numbers to represent real world quantities or just real world amounts? Now I want you to turn your standards practice book to page 271 and we are going to take a look at some real world applications of this concept. Okay, at the top it says you have used the number line to show zero and whole numbers. You can extend the number line to the left of zero to show the opposites of whole numbers. Now for example the opposite of positive three is negative three. And this is really important. Any whole number Okay, very important to know any whole number. In other words, it, it does not include one half or 3.2. Okay, not included. Any whole number, like you see right here, or the opposite of a whole number, is called an integer. Okay, so any whole number or the opposite, for example, positive 1, the opposite of positive 1 is negative 1. Okay, it's the same distance to the right or to the left of 0. Okay, it's called an integer. So any whole number or the opposite of a whole number is called an integer. Okay, now how can you tell whether a number is an integer or not? Okay, it is an integer if it is a whole number or the opposite of a whole number. So that's how we can tell. So any whole number or the opposite of a whole number would be an integer. Okay, for example, 2, 28, negative 6, 1, negative 4 are all integers. However, 2 and 1 half is not an integer. 3.8, not an integer. Any whole number or the opposite of a whole number is an integer. Now let's take a look at example one here. It says the temperature in Fairbanks, Alaska was 37 degrees below zero. Doesn't sound too pleasant. Okay, write an integer to represent this situation. Okay, first of all in this step we need to decide whether the integer is positive or negative. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to take a look at this and think about some of our background information and use what we already know and apply it to something that we're learning. Okay, so it says, first of all, the word below, let's write this right in your book there, the word below that we see right here tells me that the integer is negative. Okay, now step two, we're going to write the integer, which is negative 37. Okay, 37 degrees below, that's the key point here, below zero, negative 37. So we, so we know that the temperature in Fairbanks, Alaska was negative 37 degrees. Okay, let's take a look at example number two. It says the koala bears gained 11 yards on a football play. Okay, write an integer to represent this situation then tell what zero represents in that situation. So we need to figure out not only what the integer it is, but also what zero would represent. Okay, now we know here that positive integers represent yards and that would be gained. Negative integers would, rep would represent yards lost. Pretty simple there. Okay, so we need to figure out what zero means. So zero means yards whether were neither gained nor lost. In other words, if it was first and ten and you know they did not gain any yards at all, zero yards would mean second and ten. Okay, so sometimes it's important to not get too confused with this, but just understand that um, you know you do have background knowledge about this, and that integers we're just dealing with positive and negative numbers. So let's turn your books to page 272, to the share and show section. Okay, now it says write an integer to represent the situation, 
and it is important to think about the process think about the words that we're looking at for number one it says a loss of twenty five dollars so the word loss represents an integer that is negative remember ne integers we're always dealing with positive or negative numbers okay so it would be negative there The integer that represents the situation would be negative 25. Why do we know that? Because it's a loss there. Okay, number two, 73 degrees above zero. All right, what we need to think about is what word, what are some of the keywords there? Above zero, okay, means it's going to be a positive integer. Okay, an integer to represent this would just be positive 73. Okay, what I want you to do now is numbers 3 and 4. And when you're finished with 3 and 4, you can press play, and I will have the answer for you. So pause the video now. Okay, the integer that represent number 3 would be negative 200. We know that because it's 200 feet below sea level. Okay, now 0 would represent actual sea level. Okay, a profit of $76 would be positive 76. Now think about what would zero represent for number four. It would mean neither a profit nor a loss would represent zero there. Okay, let's take a look at number five. We're going to look at a situation, find the integer, and also figure out what zero represents. Okay, so it says for number five, it says the passenger jet flew at an altitude of 34,000 feet. Okay, now with this, we know that a jet is not going to be below sea level necessarily or, or a negative number or anything like that. So the integer would be positive 34,000. And we know that there's not an above or, or anything showing positive, but we do know that a jet flies, okay, and when you're flying, you're in the air. Okay, so what does zero represent? Zero would just represent sea level. Okay, we could even just say on the ground there. Okay, so for number six, it says Zach lost 45 points on his first turn. Not so good for Zach. Let's first of all think about the integer here that would represent. First of all, keyword would be lost because it's that keyword lost. We're going to have negative 45. Okay, now what would zero represent? We could say neither gaining nor losing points. And I just want you to write that in that spot right there. We could say neither gaining. So neither gaining nor losing points. Okay, what I want you to do is number seven all by yourself. When you're finished, you can press play, and I have the answer for you. So pause the video now. Okay, for number seven, Craig was seven, or I'm sorry, 20 minutes early for his appointment, so the integer would be negative 20. Early would represent the negative there. What would zero represent? Zero would represent being on time. Okay, I want you to do numbers eight, through 14 all by yourself and when you press play I will have the answers for you so pause the video now okay here are their answers for numbers 8 through 14 check your answers make sure that they do match mine if they do not and you're a little confused you may need to rewind this video and look at some of the examples that we did previously. Now let's take a look at 15 together. It says Gina withdrew $600 from her checking account to pay for her new guitar. What integer could you write to represent the withdrawal and what does zero represent? Now first of all the integer if we're taking $600 out withdrew or losing $600 for something that would be negative 600 would be the integer And what would zero represent? Zero re would represent neither withdrawing nor depositing money in her checking account. So thinking about our essential question, we were talking about integers, is how can you use positive negative numbers to represent real world quantities? And the answer to that 
is decide whether the quantity is positive or negative, then write the integer with the appropriate positive or negative sign. So this concludes our video on integers. If you have any questions about this concept, please come and see me.